Welcome everybody, Grissig from Austria. My name is Peter and I want to talk about the Kanban board SPFX sample. You can find it on GitHub on the PMP sample repository. So let's take a look. Uh, what is a Kanban board? Uh, when I look at the Wikipedia, I have a wonderful screenshot. So you see it directly in a good way that I'm in the sharing mode. Um, that you uh, move one task from one uh, bucket to the next bucket. So um, I come from the development side and I normally work in HL methods and they are time boxed. But sometimes uh, this doesn't meet uh, the requirements of a project. Uh, think about a IT support project, then uh, you have uh, you need the flexibility to make uh, changes during the site. So this is the reason why you use Comboard sometimes in, in, uh, in a project setup. So who had the idea of such a Kanban board? It was RAM. It was in 2019 and this I digged into the source code repository and found this animation. You see, you can move tasks from one state to the other state. You can click on the task and then a pop-up opens. And this was 2019. Thank you uh, for your work, RAM. So, and then uh, there was an issue in 2020 and Daniel, uh, took a look at the issue and fixed it. Yes, this is the old uh, UX uh, from the Microsoft, how you can say sync to Teams. You see it here on the side. So the next big thing was 2020 also, there was an issue and they said, hey, we want to use this web part in Internet Explorer 11. Yeah, meanwhile, Internet Explorer is uh, end of support. Yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, it's three years ago, but uh, with this issue, Daniel, Hugo and me uh, rewrite the complete web part and uh, changed it and made it with the Office UI fabric. It's called it nowadays. It is calling Fluent UI. So, and then Alex changed uh, the version of the SPFX and upgraded from PMPGS version 1 to version 2 and also the PMP controls we had before is now on version 3. And then uh, 2025 uh, during the refresh ranger saying hackathon in October, uh, I changed it to the current version of SPFX, it's 1.20 and PMPGS v4. So, and what you see is we have eight different people we are involved with this web part. So let's take a look how it works uh, today. So uh, you find it directly on the uh, SPFX uh, web part. Here it is, and here the red Kanban board. You have here a minimal path of awesome, so you can make npm install, gulp surf, or you can build it directly and ship it. Then you go to the app management, and the app management looks nowadays really, really great. You click on upload, select the file, and then you have it already. It's available for SharePoint and Teams. And as soon as you have it, you can add it to a page. I have prepared it, I'm like a cook, and add it here, and you see the functionality is the same. You can move tasks from one state to the other state. So uh, what is the requirement you need for this web part? You have here task lists. This is a de uh, default task list. Okay, the task list is an old thing, but it is working in SharePoint, and you can add here different uh, things. You have a status. Let's take a look into the status. This is here in the settings. And the status are default values. Task status. It is uh, default values. And these values you can change uh, directly here. I made a second uh, list already, uh, but uh, you can add multiple uh, status fields here. So let's go back to our page. I have it here and let's edit this page. Yes, perfect. So when I delete it, I will edit here directly. You can see the Kanban board is here. Here on the top, this is the PMP control uh, web part title. This is the configuration web part. So we can, can select config and here 
what we see here on the left hand side, it's also a PMP control. This is a reusable control. So you can use it in your web part. So that for the implementation, you can look uh, into the code. Here, also a PMP control is here. You can move it up, you can move the directions, everything you want. And what you have seen on the left bottom side, there are more tabs here. So you can configure each uh, bucket, you can change the headline to hello, for example, add and process indicator. Yes, this one, change the color. So, and you, uh, you see no change on the left hand side because only when you say, uh, uh, click on save. So we have two different things in the control. The one is when you hit save, uh, the properties will be stored. And this is a reactive. When you say, okay, click here, you have uh, directly an update to this thing. So let's go next, next here. Then we have here the, my, where is my test for? Five, here it is. When we look here, uh, you have all the details here, images are supported, and so on. What is missing? Maybe an add button to add new tasks, because then you have uh, in the new UI and don't and get rid of the old uh, UI of SharePoint. So let's jump back uh, to my PowerPoint slides. Uh, when you think about the versions, uh, SharePoint 2016 uses version SPFX 1.1. It's really, really old. Then SharePoint 2090 and the subscription edition 1.50 and SharePoint Online supports all versions. So when you think you have a, um, a web part and it's only used in online, then it doesn't, you can use the newest version of SPFX, only when you have to support other. When you think about the node versions, so the so on-premise versions are nearly 10 versions behind um, the current SPF uh, Node.js version. And when you think about React, when you have to use it for SharePoint subscription edition, you don't, uh, can't use hooks or something like this. So this is the reason you should update it to the rest, uh, to the newest version of SPFX. And the good thing is the last two uh, SharePoint version will be end of lifetime in around one a year. So stay tuned. Please update your SharePoint version if you uh, work on premise. Uh, it's time, one year sounds much, but use and make the updates. So then for the update process, uh, when you do it, do it in the way uh, with the M365 CLI. This is the command. You get a very, very good um, summary what you have to do. And the next thing is you have uh, to execute a script on the bottom side. Then you are faster than to make each step uh, separately. But my pitfall is this line every time. And the problem here is the dollar schema, because in my uh, batch, the dollar schema dollar means that there's a variable and the variable is null. So I get the empty string and this pitfall I have made every time when I make an update. So what uh, is the next? Here you can find the sample. I hope I was fast enough. Um, if you have question, I'm in the chat. Um, or Call me on Twitter or X or uh, Blue Sky. And back to you, Chris. Mm -hmm.